when people reach out to me, um, obviously I don't give medical advice on the internet, but when they reach out to me and they say, I have this condition, you know, I usually direct them to Heart and Soil and have them email us at Heart and Soil. And, and the, the first thing I think of for people is start with your diet, right? Start with the low hanging fruit, like eat a nutrient rich diet, which I think you and I both agree is a lot of animal foods and organs and the least toxic plant foods. And so start there, you guys. So if you're listening to this and you have weird symptoms, start with the least, the least difficult things to change in your life, right? Make sure your diet is on point. Maybe think about your circadian rhythms. Think about your exposure to sunlight. Get real sunlight on your skin and sleep well. So if you're doing those things, if you're sleeping well, if you're getting sunlight on your skin and your diet is on point, you're including organs, either fresh or desiccated, and you still have weird symptoms, that is the point at which we need to think about things like, I would say, mold and co-infections. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it's, it's huge. And the problem is people don't want to face the truth. This is one of those weird controversial subjects. I mean, I've, I talk about all kinds of controversial stuff on podcasts, but mold is one of those ones that makes people really uncomfortable. And I don't know why. I haven't figured out if it's because of the money that you have to spend on remediation, the potential to have to throw out all your stuff and give away all your clothes like we did and start all over. I don't know if it's the you know, family members talking people out of it, saying you're crazy. I don't know if it's like a just a psychiatry type thing where they blame it on your, you know, it's psychosomatic, right? It's, it's all in your head. I don't know exactly. It's a convergence of many factors, but this is something people don't want to talk about. But yeah, regarding diet, that's why so many people feel better. If, if you go paleo, I think that's a good start. But if you go further and you go carnivore and like you're talking about now, adding back in honey and some berries and things like that, I'm doing the same thing personally. Like I had a grass fed sirloin for breakfast today and I feel great. Yeah. And my daughter too, my daughter, Summer, she just turned five. That kid's a carnivore. I can't get, I mean, she won't eat vegetables. She doesn't want to. And after you came on my podcast, I, I stopped feeling guilty about it because I had this pressure like, Hey honey, I'm going to get you to do some organic broccoli. I'm like, wow, oh, we got to help detox, right? Let's get sulfur refrain in you. Let's get some broccoli. Now I could just care less and she performs better without it. So how much consternation could be saved across the world in houses when parents just stop forcing their kids to eat vegetables that they don't want to eat and they don't need, like your kid is smarter than you. They don't need spinach or kale or broccoli or, or vegetables. Like just don't force them to eat vegetables and it'll be so much better. It's called a gravity plate. So a lot of mold companies do air testing where they just suck air out of the middle of your air column in your room and they say everything's fine, but the mold spores fall to the ground. So these agar plates have essentially a gum on them that will hold on to the spores and then these things can start to colonize. So you're, what we're seeing Fortunately, on the bottom picture, this is my office as of last week, only one colony, which is considered normal, only one colony of Aspergillus showed up. And then on the top here, this is our great room. We've got a big screen room and we've got a big patio. We've always got fresh airflow. So we're probably bringing in some outside molds, which can be okay. But you can see here, you can count at least, I'm counting at least five or six colonies. So I'll probably end up using some essential oils to treat that and knock the levels down. Of course, you like to match that up to the client or the patient's symptoms. You like to figure out, hey, are you having these symptoms? So on my intake form, I have people check off all that stuff we talked about earlier. If I see or hear more than three symptoms, let's say it's anxiety, fatigue, and vertigo, I'm like, oh, ding, ding, ding. And then we'll just run a urine screen to confirm or, or rule it out. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.